Hi, in this video we're going to do, do an immunization example. This is kind of a basic example of immunization, so let's just get straight to it. Uh, I've got a company that has a liability of 72900 due in two years. They wish to immunize this liability at an interest rate that corresponds to an annual discount factor of V equals 0 0.9 by using a one-year zero coupon bond and a three-year zero coupon bond. Uh, and the question is to determine how much of the one and three-year bonds should be bought. So uh, we are immunizing here at, uh, and I mentioned before, you have to immunize at a certain interest rate. I didn't give you the interest rate here. I gave you the next best thing, though. I gave you, in fact, I kind of gave you a better thing. I gave you the V value of 0.9, which is going to make, the reason I did that is it, it makes the calculations a little bit nicer. Uh, uh, the, the numbers come out a little bit nicer. We don't have as many decimals to keep up with. So there is an interest rate that corresponds to V equals 0 0.9, and I'll come back to that later in the video. Um, so we are we are actually immunizing at a certain interest rate. Okay, so uh, problem says let's uh, determine how much of the one and three year bonds we need to buy. So let's let cap F sub one denote the face amount of the one year bond and cap F sub three denote the face amount of the three year bond. So the liability is due at, at, in two years at time two, and then I have a an asset at time one. Uh, with amount cap F1 and an asset at time three with amount cap F3. So this is what my timeline is going to look like. Okay, so now let's think about the conditions uh, required uh, required for immunization. So the first condition is that the present value of the assets equals the present value of the liabilities. So the present value of the assets, I got a cap F1 times V plus a cap F3 times V cubed. That's the present value of the assets. Present value of the liabilities, I need to discount the 72,902 year, so I do that by multiplying by V squared. And then the second condition is that the duration of the assets equals the duration of the liabilities. So for a moment now, let's think about the uh, what that means. So let's, uh, and, and typically when I think of duration, I think of Macaulay duration. So let's look at the Macaulay duration of the assets, for example. Uh, so in the denominator, I just take the present value of the assets. So that's the same expression that I have up above in condition one on the left-hand side of the equal sign. But then in the numerator, I have to multiply the amount uh, of the asset times the time at which it was paid. So I'd have a understood one times the cap F1 times V, and then that three times cap F3 uh, uh, times V cubed. So now I do the same thing for the liabilities. The liability is only one, one liability. So in the denominator, I just have the 72,900 V squared. And in the numerator, I have a two times uh, that 72,900 uh, 72, times V squared. Okay, so here's what I want to, to, to emphasize to you. And this is typical of what happens in these immunization problems. Uh, because of condition one, uh, I have the present value of the assets equal the present value of the liabilities. The present value of the assets shows up in the denominator of the MACD expression for assets. The present value of the liabilities show up shows up in the MACD expression for the liabilities, and I know that those are equal to each other. So if the durations are then going to be equal to each other, I don't really need to worry about the, I've got two fractions that I'm going to set equal to each other, and I know that the denominators are equal to each other. So all I've got to do then is, is uh, those denominators are equal to each other, then the numerators have to be equal to each other, and so I, I went too fast. The num numerators have to be equal to each other, so I just set the numerator of the the expression for the MACD for the assets equal to the numerator for the expression for the MACD of the liabilities, and that's my second equation. That's the condition two equation on immunization. That's going to happen in every in every problem. So what I'm at, where I'm at right now, is I have these two equations, uh, and and I I just have the two unknowns, the cap F1 and the cap F3. So at this point, it's just a matter of solving these two equations and two unknowns. And so what I do, what I would do, there's all kinds of different ways to solve, uh, to solve this. You could use a substitution technique, or I'm going to use an elimination. I'm going to multiply the first equation uh, by a negative one, and then add it to the second equation. And then uh, I've eliminated cap F1. I get this equation in cap F3, solve it, and you'll see that cap F3 is 40,500. Plug that back in for cap F3, and you'll see that cap F1 is 32,805. So at this point, I'm just going to plug in those numeric values for cap F1 and cap F3, and, and, and let's look at the question at the same time. So I have, uh, so this is, this is my answer. Um, you know, determine how much of, uh, of the one and three year bond should be bought. I, sh I should buy um, uh, 
uh, a one year the one year zero coupon bond with a with a uh, a redemption value or a face amount of thirty two thousand eight hundred and five and the three year bond with a face amount of forty thousand five hundred I say face amount here I'm assuming that the bond's redeemable at at uh, at, at, at par um, it doesn't tell me otherwise so I'm just going to assume that the bonds are redeemable at par and I, I want to make another comment here <laughs> about uh, I, I said this in a previous video, you're not going to be able to go out and buy a bond. Let's look at the one-year bond. You're not going to be able to go out and buy a one-year bond that has a face amount of 32805 It's not going to happen. You, you can't, um, you can't um, uh, uh, require, you can't demand that the face amount be a certain amount. It's not going to be. It's going to be a face amount probably of 1000 but what you can do then is buy 32.805 of those 1,000 face value bonds so that you have a total face amount after collectively you have a total face amount that's being paid at time one of 32,805. And again, I made this comment in the previous video, you're really not going to be able to buy 32.805 uh, of those. You could buy 32 of them, you could buy 33, but you're, you're not going to be able to buy fractional shares of, of bonds but we're not going to keep that from, from uh, uh, being part of our solution here. So uh, again, instead of getting through the, going through that whole process of saying, okay, well, let me say that I have a 1,000 face value bond because most bonds are going to be that 1,000 face value, and let's let uh, N be the number of those 1,000 face value bonds that I need to buy, and then going through all this arithmetic and finding out that you need 32.805 of those, uh, it's much easier to do what I did in this problem, and let's just let cap F1, uh, F be the face amount of that one-year uh, one bond, and we find out that the face amount is 32,805. I mentioned all this in a previous video, and mathematically, um, you know, mathematically those, those two different scenarios are actually uh, mathematically equivalent to one another. Okay, so now at this point, let me also mention I have, um, I found out that uh, with uh, the face amount of the one-year bond at 32805 and the face amount of the three-year bond at 40500 that I have, uh, I have uh, satisfied the first two conditions of immunization. I don't know that I have, that I've, I'm immunized here. All I know is I've satisfied the first two conditions of immunization. Um, uh, so uh, let me state a fact here. Uh, I'm just going to state the fact, give you the punchline without proof. Um, but the fact is that if there is an asset on each side of a liability and the first two conditions of immunization are satisfied, then you have achieved immunization. And not only have you achieved immunization, you have achieved full immunization. So you have a global minimum uh, of zero for the net present value function at the uh, at the corresponding interest rate here, okay. So now let, let's let's kind of discuss you know the significance of that. That's that's very uh, that's that's pretty uh, powerful. So let's talk about the significance of that. Remember the net. So the net present value function uh, is the present value of the assets minus the present value of the liabilities. So yet let's use the numbers in this problem to do to look at what the net present value function is as a function of the interest rate. So I need to discount the 32,805 for one period. So I do that by multiplying by one plus i to the minus one. Keep in mind, I want to think of this as a function of i, not a function of v, but a function of i. And, and then I discount the 40,500 for three periods. And then I subtracted from that the present value of the assets, um, which, I have, which I have written. Now, I, I've, done this, I've done this immunization at a V value of 0.9, and a V value of 0.9 implies that the interest rate is a 0.1 repeating. And so uh, my claim here is that we have achieved full immunization at the interest rate 0.1 uh, repeating. So if we plug in a 0.1, that 0.1 repeating for the I in the uh, expression for the net present value function above, um, well, we should get zero. That was the first condition of immunization. And if we do, I'll leave it to you to show that you will. You, you'll actually get exactly zero when you plug, it, plug that in. Now, what does it mean that you've achieved immunization, in this case, full immunization? It means if you change the interest rate in either direction, in either direction, the graph is concave up and it, and, and, and it comes down, it touches the, the I axis 
at zero uh, at the I value of 0.1 repeating, and then it's concave up. Meaning if you change the interest rate in e either direction, the net present value function is going to be positive. So let, let's illustrate that. Let's change the interest rate in, in uh, let's go to the left of the 0.1 repeating interest rate. And I'm just going to randomly pick a, a, an interest rate. Let's say it's 5%. So let's plug in a 5% for the interest rate now on the net present value calculation. And that's the expression I would get. I'll, I'm going to leave it to you to show that, uh, to see if you agree that that number is end, ends up being 105.83. So the present value of the assets minus the present value of the liabilities is 105.83 using an, a 5% interest rate. In other words, I have uh, uh, an, an excess of assets over liabilities. I have 105.83 more in present value of assets than I do in present value of liabilities. That's a good thing. You know, I'm, uh, uh, I'm in the black. That's a good thing at 5%. And now let's look at what happens if I change it in the other direction. Let's go at an interest rate bigger than a 0.1 repeating. Let's say at a 15% interest rate. So change the interest rate to 15%. That's what you get for the net present value function. And I'll leave it to you. Uh, to show or see if you agree with me that that's a 32.62. So now I've got $32.62 more in present value of assets than I do in present value of liabilities. Again, good things. That's a good thing. Uh, and, and you can, uh, I just randomly chose those, but it would uh, it go in either direction as much as you like, and you're going to end up with a positive uh, net present value because I have uh, a global minimum of of zero at that interest rate I equal 0.1 repeating. I know that because I've achieved full immunization based on the fact. Again, I didn't tell you the fact, but this fact is very uh, powerful and very useful. So in a lot of problems, what you'll find is that uh, they're just asking you to satisfy, you know, uh, find the assets that will satisfy uh, the first two conditions of immunization. And a lot of times they're using this fact without telling you that, um, they're, but they're using this fact to show or, or to, to claim that you, have, that you have full immunization. One last comment, this is my last comment on that, is, this, is uh, if you have, this fact says that if you have an asset on each side of the liability, which we do here, and the first two conditions of immunization are satisfied, then full immunization is achieved. If you turn that around, on the other hand, if you have a liability on each side of the asset, then you're not going to be able to achieve immunization. And in fact, if you have those uh, first two conditions of immunization satisfied, but you have a liability on each side of the asset, uh, then you're, you're, uh, uh, you're not in a good situation. Uh, you're, you have a net present value of zero at at the, the interest rate at which you've achieved immunization. But at this point, you have a concave down graph. So when you move the interest rate in either direction, you have more in present value of liability. Net present value is, is negative. You have a, a more in, in, li in present value of liabilities than you do in present value of, of, of assets. That's kind of not too hard to see, I don't think, because if, uh, you, know, if you have a, a liability on each side of, of an asset and you, you, you uh, if we think of that as, as that there's this other person, we'll call it a counterparty, a counterparty that uh, is uh, your liabilities are their assets and your asset is their liability, then if you switch it around, they, if you have an, a liability on each side of the asset, they have, the counterparty has an asset on each side of the liability, so the counterparty is immunized against you. So the counterparty is immunized. That's not good for you. Uh, you're you're on the on the on the raw end of that deal. You know the counterparty's net present value function uh, is 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 concave up, uh, which means your net present value function is concave down. Okay, I'm not sure how much you'll see that in a problem, but uh, it's it's good to see the the big picture. I think. Okay, so that's a that's a basic example on immunization, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I do I do expect you to see something like that on your FM exam. All right, I'll see you in the next video.